This home base arcade system is one that I've had in my collection for a while and that is the Vectrix. Look how amazing this looks. The Vectrix came out in November of 1982 in the United States and was discontinued shortly after in 1984. However, it did get some awesome games like Berserk, Pole Position, a Star Trek game, and many other games. Before we dig into the Vectrix itself, let's go ahead and talk about the backstory on how I got my hands on this system. Now, originally I saw a guy post on Craigslist. Yes, it was that long ago, back when Craigslist was a thing, that he was selling a Vectrix in 13 games for only $300. And that's a steal. However, he lived about three hours away from me, so I had to convince him to meet me halfway, which was about an hour and a half away from where I live currently. And so I met him at a gas station, which the gas station was kind of sketchy, but so was using Craigslist back then. So we ended up meeting, I ended up picking this up and wow was I amazed when I got it home. I had always wanted to get a Vectrix. I'd seen people talk about them but I'd never seen them in person. So when I saw the ad on Craigslist, I knew for $300, I just had to have it. Back to the Vectrix itself. Since it was a vector based <laughs> system, it only used black and white and there wasn't any color. And that's when I came up with these color overlays. Sadly, I only have the Star Trek one, but these things really made the black and white pop when you were playing with it. You could have the overlay on the screen or take it off and it felt like a completely different game. Moving on to the controller, the controller was actually a joystick and four different buttons that actually folded up into the console that made it very easy to take it portably. You could also plug a second controller in if you needed to, but for the most part, this was a single person console that has some pretty awesome games. Enough about the console and the controller. If a system doesn't have games, it's not even worth playing. So the first game I'm going to mention is actually Clean Sweep, which if you ever played arcade games in the actual arcade, you always saw a Miss Pac-Man around. And that's kind of what Clean Sweep is. You basically go around, sweep up everything and then when you have a full bag you go and take it to the middle and then you continue on however you are also being chased by the enemy so you want to fill up the bag and then go back to the home base to empty it out as quickly as you can but you do have that impending doom of the enemy chasing you down the next game we're going to talk about is Armor Attack. This is a very awesome game that kind of reminds me of Battle Tanks. Now, if you've ever played a game like Battle Tanks, you're basically in a tank, you drive around to shoot the opponent, and that's pretty much the gist of this game. Now, however, when you are playing it, some cool things happen, like multiple tanks being on the screen or even a helicopter coming after you. I don't quite understand how I'm able to shoot down a helicopter with a tank, but we'll just leave it at that. It feels like something that would be probably hard to do in real life, but in this game, it's actually really fun. If you are a fan of playing pinball machines in the arcade back in the day, then Spinball is probably a really good game for you. Now think about that Windows PC game where it was just pinball, intergalactic pinball, I believe. That's basically what this is, but with vector graphics. It's a really simple pinball machine game, but it's actually still a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to mention it because if you are a fan of pinball and you have a Vectrix, Spinball is definitely a game you should pick up. Now moving on, if you are a fan of asteroids or something like that where you basically were in a ship and you were shooting, but maybe you wanted to play against someone or a computer, actually Space Wars is a really good game for that. It's really quick. And when you start it up, you basically are thrown into the game and you basically have to fly around and avoid getting shot by the opponent, which could be pretty fun, but also pretty stressful because enemies are always coming after you. So you wanna make sure that you are faster than that enemy. You're hitting that button to fire as quickly as possible and moving around as much as possible as well to avoid the bullets 
on coming from that enemy. I already showed off the overlay for Star Trek, but I actually have the box here as well. And this game is actually a really good game to play, especially since I have the overlay, it makes this game look way cooler with that blue and yellow. Now, this is basically a shooter where you have ships coming at you that are shooting things at you and you have to shoot the bullets and you have to shoot at the enemy that's coming at you before they end up killing you. It's pretty much a cash grab at the, the name Star Trek. However, it is still a ton of fun and I highly suggest you pick up this game if this is something you are into or even if you are a Star Trek fan, I really think this one is worth your time. The next game we are going to be talking about is Fortress of Narzad. Now, this reminds me of an old Japanese dubbed over English TV show called Most Extreme Elimination Challenge because there is one part in that TV show where you have to make it up the hill without things falling down and hitting you and knocking you over. And that's for the most part the gist of this game. You are trying to make it to the front of the fortress or the top and you have ships coming down at you, shooting things, and you have to shoot them in order to knock them off. So it makes me think of Most Extreme Elimination Challenge because that was what I saw, but it's also a really fun game. These next two games are probably my favorite games that I own for the Vectrix. The first one we're talking about is Berserk. Now this is a pretty awesome shooter where you walk through the maps and you have to shoot the bad guys and avoid this happy face that is constantly following you around. And if you get shot or hit by the smiley face, you automatically die. So you have to make it through the room to the next room and so on and so forth. And this game is a ton of fun. So that just leaves a pole position, which has to be probably one of my favorite games from the arcade back in the day. So playing this on my Vectrix at home, there's no difference because this is one of those fun games. If you don't know what pole position is, you're basically driving a Formula One car down the track and you have to avoid obstacles while going through turns and speeding up and just having a bunch of fun. So I really love this game, whether it's in the arcade or actually at home on my Vectrix. Now I do have a few other games for the Vectrix, but those games are kind of the weird and wacky games that I have played, but I'm not really necessarily wanting to talk about in this video. If you wanna hear more about the games that I have, let me know, comment down below. But for the most part, that is what I wanted to talk about. The Vectrix that I have in my collection that is really awesome, as well as the games that are with it. Now, this isn't a system that people talk about very much, and really, I don't see them very much either. They're not in the wild very often. They were only released for two years, so I had to talk about it, and that's why I ultimately made this video. If you enjoyed this video or any of the videos I have already put out, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. But I want to leave by saying the Vectrix is one of those consoles that ever since I laid my hands on it and I physically got it, uh, every time I plug it in, I spend way too much time playing it. I have uh, way too much fun. And realistically, if you can afford it, it's definitely one of those systems that's obscure, but definitely well worth owning. So with that being said, that's all I got for you guys. Peace.